What is up everybody? My name is Fat Cat and in this video we're going to talk about the ideal emotions you should have in a trading session because a lot of traders tend to focus on emotions they don't want to have. They focus on lack of patience, not being calm, being tilted, FOMOing, ch chasing stuff, not being content. You guys are so guilty of focusing on the emotions you don't want to have during a trading session, but instead you should be focusing on emotions you want to have and cultivate that. Because the thing is, what you think is what you get. And the more you think of something you don't want, the more likely that's going to happen. A lot of you guys are guilty of not focusing on the ideal emotions, not thinking about the ideal emotions, not feeling the ideal emotions. When a bad trading session happens, you guys aren't relishing in the ideal emotions. So in this video right here, uh, I definitely recommend the uh, new trader psychology video uh, before this specific video, because in this video right here, I talk about how traders tend to associate specific price action, P&L swings with specific emotions. Now, a lot of you guys, you know, if you, a sub of my coffee, a link in the description. Uh, this is my coffee right now, so I'm just kind of playing some of the footage. It is narrated, by the way. But that's uh, kind of something new we got going on, and we got Taruk and Cam over here, or whoever the fuck decides to lay in there. It's mostly Tarukin. But a, a lot of, like, my personal sessions... The PL tends to swing. Sometimes I'm above and below break even like three times. Typically, traders will have a meltdown and then they'll start to fuck fumble the session and give just not make it out. They just get tilted or they lose a the cool. Uh, they're not content with the PL swinging like that. Um, and then they blow up. A lot of you guys blowing up, and I another trader uh, that I've seen recently was doing great for weeks and weeks and then just one day just absolutely blew it the fuck up. Uh, they become, they had a lack of fucking uh, calmness, a lack of contentment and they just everything went to hell. So a, a lot of you guys are able to handle p &L if it's green right off the rip and it just keeps going green. Maybe a little bit of loss here or there you guys can handle. Not so many of you are able to handle a session where you start off in the red or you're in the red several trades in, five, ten trades in, you're still in the red. At some point, you guys experience a breaking point and then you fuck it. You start to lose calmness and then it just all goes to hell. So I want you to imagine we have a table here, which I drew. It's a three-legged table. Focus is this turkey in the middle. Contentment is on, is this leg. Patience is this leg. Calmness is this leg. For instance, if you're down, right? Let's say you're down and you got to wait 30 minutes, an hour, or even tomorrow to get out of that loss. Chances are your patience is going to be tested, right? And what happens if we kick the leg of patience out from underneath this table? Well, the fucking turkey's gonna slide off and it all comes crashing down. Huh? That's like blowing up a fucking day. It all comes crashing down. You lose your focus. Let's say you have a session, and I have quite a few of these, where maybe my PL is swinging up and down, right? And I'm above and below break even three fucking times. I'm up a thousand, down a thousand, up a thousand, down a thousand. You know, and that's the course of maybe 20 trades. Maybe I'm patient and I'm fine with it, but maybe I start to lose my calm, right? Same thing, we kick out this table leg, the fucking turkey slides off. Okay, let's say the market's not really yielding many good trades. Maybe it's only yielding break-evens and one-tick wins, right? I scalp, I'm a momentum scalper, so a lot of what I'm dealing with could be in that realm. There's times where trades just aren't getting fucking filled. There are times where I just, the volume is so low, the volatility is so contracted that I'm ha gonna have a hard time getting filled. If I do get filled, sometimes not all the size goes in. And then j just trying to get a one tick win is 
a pain in the ass. So maybe I'm like kind of churning out 15 trades, j just like a tick here, lose two ticks here, make a tick here, a break even here. I have to be content with that situation. I got to be content with losses. I got to be content with wins. I got to be content with non-ideal fucking trading environments because I can't fucking control it. I have to be content with the situation at hand. If I don't, what happens? That fucking table leg gets kicked out and the fucking turkey slides off. So let's look at things from a different perspective here. So here's a top-down view. So what you got to understand is these are the three ideal emotions, contentment, patience, and calmness that you need. So if you're tracing, chasing a fucking trade, you're FOMOing it. Well, you're not, you're not patient. And if you're not patient, you're probably not content that you just missed a trade. Um, and then you may start to lose your cool and you may not be calm. And then before you know it, all three legs of the table got kicked out and then it all comes crashing down. These are the three emotions, in my opinion, that you ideally need to be focused on. These are the three ideal emotions you need to be cultivating. In this video right here, changing trading habits, I talk about how you need to visualize and you need to go into self-hypnosis. At least that's the best way for fixing trading problems, in my opinion, is just looking at specific trading sessions or uh, losses that tilted you any any trading situation because the chances are you're you're experiencing this right here right so in your trading today did you experience a lack of patience a lack of calmness or a lack of contentment or a lack of all three i've talked in other videos how you need to visualize these situations right here you need to visualize the exact scenario that tilted you or that created FOMO or whatever, you need to visualize those exact scenarios with these ideal emotions, okay? Because when those scenarios happen, and again, I talk in this video right here, the new trader psychology video, you're anchoring specific price action, specific P&L swings to specific emotions. And if you're anchoring the wrong emotions with specific price action patterns, you're gonna get more of that. I see traders that get stuck for years and years and you can even get stuck for decades not being able to handle this issue. And if you don't handle this issue, you're never gonna make it. You're never gonna get good at it. You need to have your psychology game dialed in. So again, in this fucking video, it's so important to watch that. You are anchoring specific patterns right? Your job as a trader is pattern recognition, right? Well, what's happening is when you're recognizing patterns or specific patterns don't work, whether they're patterns you want to trade or not, those patterns are anchoring themselves into your subconscious mind and attaching themselves to specific emotions. It's no different than if you were driving down the highway. If somebody cuts you off, you might start to anchor and associate that with rage. So every time somebody cuts you off, that's the go-to emotion because it's been programmed into your subconscious mind. It's been programmed into your subconscious mind to go, oh, somebody cut me off rage. That is a pattern, okay? This is like traffic is such a great tool. It's a great way. It's like the markets. You're not in control. If somebody does it, you're not in control. That's a great way to practice just being calm, being content with the situation. Somebody cuts you off, being calm and being content. All three of these ideal emotions will lead one into the other. So it's one thing when the table starts to slant. It's another thing when it just full on collapses and you shut down. So maybe you wake up and you're driving somewhere and there's an accident on the highway or a train stops in front of you for 30 fucking minutes. That happened to me the other day. I was trying to get across town for dinner. Train just st decided to stop. I'm like, that's fine. I'm content with this situation. I'll move when I move and I'm just gonna be patient and I'm gonna be calm. A lot of people were jumping out of the fucking line. The problem is you have to go all the way to the other side of fucking town to the left or right and that's gonna take you 15 fucking minutes. Then it's gonna take you another 15 minutes to get to the destination because you gotta go out of town, cross bridges, 
to get over the train, and then you got to come back into town. So in the end, just jumping out of the queue really doesn't fucking help. And the people that jump out of the queue to get around the train, now it's one thing if it's easy to get around the train, but it's another thing if it's like a real big pain in the ass. The people jumping out of the fucking, they're not patient. The, the table leg comes out. You lose focus. Now, the, the focus part is going to have to do with trading. We'll talk more about that here in a moment. They, they're not content with the situation, you know? And are they calm? They might be calm. They might be calm to go around it, but some people are willing to sit there for five minutes. Maybe they're okay, but then their calmness and patience start to waver. You see one of these two table legs is starting to wobble, and then it they're not content with the situation. The patient calmness goes. They're going to try to just jump out of the fucking queue. I've seen it happen, and then the train finally moves. And they're already turned around driving, and they don't even see behind them how it fucking moved uh, at the last second. So any trading problem you're having has something to do with being the opposite of one of these situations. The environment may be too slow. You're not content with the situation. So therefore, you're probably going to lose your patience a lot more. And then, boom, the table falls, the turkey hits the floor, okay? Maybe you're taking a bunch of fucking small losses and the you're, you keep trying to get into a, a bigger run and you keep taking paper cuts. Well, maybe you start to, like, lose your calm. If you're going to lose your calm, you're going to lose your patience. And then you're not content with the situation. You're not content with the situation. All of it comes out. And then you start impulsively trading and you go on full tilt mode and then boom. So the thing in the middle is focus. Focus is so fucking important. The people that bitch and complain that I don't get to the point or my videos are too long can't focus. I was diagnosed with ADD. So in high, my first year in high school, uh, English class and algebra one, I was present the first semester with all the other kids. The teacher, whatever the teacher was saying, it was those words were being projected in the same room as the kids that passed the class, as I who failed the class. So I heard all the same shit everybody else heard in that specific class, English and algebra, but I failed both of those first semester because I was not listening. I was not paying attention. Some people can put on one of my trading videos and they're not focused. They're actually not paying attention. Some of you guys will sit down to a trading session and you're not paying attention. You're not focused. You're not focused. On, you're not getting into the market. You're not feeling the pulse of the market. And also you got to be f focused on patience, calmness, and contentment, especially if this is newer for you. You got to actively be focusing on those things until they become part of your subconscious programming. Most of what we're doing is we're running on a subconscious program. Most of our waking day, we're doing everything automated. You can drive your car to a destination you've been to a hundred times over and do it without fucking thinking because you're operating from a subconscious perspective. You can just brush your teeth, however. You can turn your computer on. You can type words on your keyboard without even fucking thinking. It just happens. You're operating from a subconscious place. And again, what I say in this fucking video right here, you're starting to, from the first day you start putting on trades all the way till now, you are associating specific P&L swings, specific price actions with specific emotions. And the chances are those emotions are patience, being upset, and not being okay with the situation, which is the opposite of contentment, patience, and calmness. So now you're operating from a subconscious place. You're automatically operating from a point where you're associating price action with specific emotions or P&L swings or P&L with specific emotions. And chances are they're bad emotions. That's most of you. I mean, I, fuck. Just this fucking week, I've had four traders bring up uh, how they're not able to control their emotions. Two of them, I said, hey, I've made plenty of fucking videos on this, on how to change it. Have you watched them? Two of them are like, no, because some people will watch three of my videos, come to me for help, and they're not engaging and focusing and consuming the content that I have. They're not going through 
the channel and looking like every video is almost a unique fucking lesson. So that's how I like to do this shit. And if they are sitting through these fucking videos, they're probably not focusing for the entire time. Cause I always reference other fucking videos. And I explain why you should go watch those other videos. And if you're not focusing, you're just going to let that slip by. So it's no different. You could be present for the video because some people are like, hey, I fucking listened to your video, but this and that and this, or I don't agree with that or whatever. And I'll do what the fucking teachers always did to me when I wasn't fucking listening in class. They would call me out, hey, fat cat. And then they would ask me a question to an answer they just gave. And I could never fucking answer it. You know why? Because I wasn't fucking focused. Doesn't matter that I took the same class as everybody else. I wasn't fucking focused. I wasn't listening. I wasn't paying attention. You could have a... Vi there are people who have this video on right now where they're barely hearing what the fuck I'm saying because they're not focused. Next semester, my mom puts me on fucking Adderall, which is essentially fucking meth. And at that point, I'm paying attention, I'm focused, I'm dialed in. So it is my opinion, and people like to bitch and complain about focus. Focus is a skill set. Just like trading, learning how to play hockey, baseball, whatever the fuck you're doing, focus is a skill. You have to actively be aware. See where we're going here? You have to be aware of your focus. You gotta be dialed in, you gotta be paying attention to your to yourself paying attention. You have to, that's the thing. At this point, when I listen to lectures or audiobooks or anything that requires any type of focus, I make sure that I focus. And if I, my brain starts to trail off, I'm like, all right, well, let's rewind that a little bit and listen to it again. I'm the type of guy who will reread the same page in a book five, six times over. And then I try to keep paying attention until I get into flow state and then I can just do it and it's fully being absorbed. And over the years, I practice relentlessly focusing. I'm not gonna take fucking drugs. You don't need drugs for that shit. Look, I was diagnosed with it, ADD. So if you have it or whatever, if it's, it's a problem you have or whatever, you're allowed to talk shit about it. So too many people bitch and moan about focus. I mean, we live in a society where you're can't focus for shit. You got TikTok brains, a five second video, a Snapchat video, YouTube shorts. People are clicking on videos and immediately scrolling to a next video, clicking on that video, immediately scrolling to a next video because you guys can't fucking focus. And it's just a skill. And the society we live in is making the focus a lot fucking worse. There's so much stimulation as technology progresses that now it's just too much for us and um, we're starting to lose more and more focus. So it is, a, it's a skill set. And if people bitch and moan, they can't make it through an hour long video or just get to the point, chances are they can't sit there for two, three, four, five fucking hours during a trading session and not lose their focus. If you can't focus on one of these videos, you have no fucking business fucking trading. You have absolutely no business trading because you're not going to be able to focus for that long in a session, especially when it gets boring. Because if somebody can't focus on a video, uh, you know, they're not patient. They're, there's a lack of patient. So the fucking leg kicks out of the table and the turkey starts to spill off the fucking table. There goes focus. I'm not, I can't sit here. He's not getting to the point. The whole video is the fucking point. They lose their patience. The focus comes off. They're no longer calm. They're going to write some stupid fucking comment. Ugh, it's too long. And uh, before you know it, two legs came out, the calmness and patient leg, and then the focus slid off the table. In fact, they're not content with the way I present my videos. They're not content with the way I do lecture. So that's like all three legs just falling out and folks just hits the fucking floor and they lose it, okay? Some for some people and that's the people who leave comments. Oh, it's too long. Okay. Well, some people just watch it for a few seconds and they don't say anything and they leave. Well, you know, they're not patient. Um, they're, they may be calm, but they're not content, obviously, because if they were, uh, they want to be Xing out. 
So in that specific situation, the content leg and the patient leg kicks out, focus slides off the fucking table. Here's the table. Here's the fucking table. So at all times, you need to be trying to keep focus. You got to be in flow state. You got to be paying attention to the market. And focus is finite. It takes a lot of fucking mental power to stay focused. But you're always trying to balance your focus and you need to be focused on making sure these legs don't fucking fall out when it comes to reprogramming the situation. Again, I've talked about how to reprogram to these fucking emotions. Now, if you're not going to go down the path of like self-hypnosis, I have this video right here on how to stop over trading. Uh, this, this goes over reprogramming and visualizing contentment, calmness, patience. So I recommend this fucking video over here. Again, two tools, self-hypnosis, which we see in this one, which we see in this one right here. I also talk about it in this video. And then this one is actually reviewing the session and programming these ideal emotions to specific price action patterns that may have either made me not patient, not calm, or not content. So if you're really wanting to dial this in in your trading, you need to watch all three of those videos, including this one as well, which you are doing now. <clears throat> Don't know why I said that, but these are the ideal emotions. and. You got to maintain that focus. You got to focus on just taking good trades, just taking good trades. You can't worry about what just happened. You can't, whether it's a win, big loss. Today, I got fucking swept. There was a massive, like the one fucking place today, I go short and it just rips against me so hard. The one place on the fucking chart where the biggest fucking blowout was, I just happened to be on the other side of that. Sometimes it happens. You could be a pro golfer. You could have everything dialed in. You go hit the fucking ball and a gust of wind can just pick up. You're going to get swept. There are points where you're going to just be on the wrong side of bad luck and you have to be content with the situation because if you're not, you're going to not be calm and you're not going to be patient enough to fucking grind out of that by taking one good at a trade and then the focus will collapse and then the opposite emotions will fucking kick in. Look, most of your trading, your P&L is not going, like once you hit consistency, a lot of the times you're still gonna be struggling, trading's still hard. And when I say you're struggling, I mean, you may be fighting for trades. You're never gonna just have that ideal equity curve where it's just green all the time. Everything you touch turns into gold and you got all these small losses or whatever. Especially for those of you who are taking bigger fucking trades, your your loss rate goes up at that point. And scalpers, you're going to have a higher win rate, but that's on small wins. So you're going to be at the mercy of taking slightly larger losses at time that you have to grind out. You're going to have to grind out of a bigger loss and you got to be content with that. You got to be patient. If I take a big loss and it takes tick, six, seven, eight trades to get out of it, I need to be content, patient, and calm and just do that because if i start to hold and try to get all of it back in one trade then obviously i'm not content and obviously i'm not willing to be patient and grind out of it so therefore those legs get kicked the fuck out the focus starts to slide off the table because then i start to think about man i really want to fix this loss with one big trade to get it all back and then I'm no longer focused on, hey, this is a good scalp. Sure, it's only two ticks, one tick. It may not get it all back. And I may need to do this five, six times to get it all back. Because when you're not patient, you're not content, or you're not calm, you're no longer focused. And then you start thinking about whatever. If you're experiencing FOMO, you're thinking, oh, I'm missing this trade. I'm missing this trade. I need to get in this trade. You're no longer focused on the price action at hand. So therefore you're thinking about other shit. And then you're going to start to miss little signals, little things on the charts, all that shit. And then it's going to just all go to fucking hell because you lost focus. It's no different than those of you who are interested in the coffee behind me Link in the description. Sometimes it doesn't work. You're going to have to spell it out in the browser. But for those of you interested in the fucking coffee, you know, it's to help you 
well, first and foremost is to see what I'm doing. And what's beautiful about the coffees is you get to see me have problems. Today, I, I had a f down 2100, okay? Um, and you get to see how I calmly handle the situation and how I step out. There's a lot of advantage in seeing a trader experience non-ideal situations from a place of calmness, contentment, and patience. Those that have been with me for a while have seen me definitely improve in this area because I work so relentlessly hard on this part of the game. And the problem is you guys can get stuck for your entire trading career if you're not working on this part of your game. Because again, in this specific video, PL swings, uh, sudden movements. If you see a sudden up move and it's just ripping, it triggers FOMO. That sudden up move is triggering FOMO. And for years and years and years of your trading, even when you're brand new and just learning, you're starting to associate sudden movements with FOMO, which is not calmness or contentment. So the legs of the table collapse, you're gonna lose fucking focus. Sure, when you're new, you're still learning, but you're training yourself to associate that price action with lack of calmness, lack of contentment, lack of, your, the whole fucking table just falls. It all implodes. Because when you're chasing, you're not being patient. You're not content with the sa situation. If you're cha chasing FOMO, you're probably not calm. So it's like you're just sweeping out every fucking leg at once. The whole thing fucking implodes on itself. And then you fuck up. And then you got to prop that fucking table up. And chances are you're not able to pick that fucking table back up. Okay? It's one thing if one of those legs start to wobble and you can go and brace it. Okay? It's another thing when it all starts to get wobbly and you're not focused or paying attention to the fucking wobbliness of this table. But here's the thing. A lot of you guys aren't aware of your emotions because you're operating from a subconscious place. Most of what you're doing is subconscious. So like I said in this fucking video here, you're baking this shit into the point it becomes automated. So you don't even have to think and you're just going to associate price action with FOMO tilt, lack of contentment. Uh, p l swings, you're going to just associate with negative emotions because you've been training yourself over months and months, hundreds, thousands of trades, years and years. You've been programming yourself to associate specific price action with those specific emotions, which aren't the good emotions. It's not these emotions because you're not doing that. Chances are you're not because nobody teaches this shit, nobody fucking shares this shit. If you fucking like this shit, fucking like the goddamn video and subscribe for more. But anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying Taruk and Cam. He doesn't move much. And due to the way I fucking put this up, notice this, it's like a, it's like a second fucking, oh, I just spilled shit everywhere. It's like a second camera, look at my foot. So we got janky shit going on here, but uh, you know what? Sets the mood, I figured, you know, we spruce up the background a little bit. Again, when it comes to this shit, you've now made negative emotions automated, okay? And most of how we operate our life is from an automated perspective, from a subconscious perspective. Now, in order to make the unconscious conscious, you need to start becoming aware. You need to start becoming aware of these emotions. You need to start becoming aware, and some of you are becoming aware. You're aware of the negative emotions, you're aware of the negative emotions being there, but you don't know how to fix the problem. It's through repetition. It's through doing your trading review, seeing, this is why it's important to record your trades. Record your trades. This video right here, I talk about how to start reviewing your trades or how to review faster. So in this specific video, that's a trip how Tarukin came off the thing and then he's on the thing. I told you the cameras are all weird. But anyways, in this video, I talk about how, you know, how to start reviewing your trades and how to do it faster and quicker. So when you figure this out, which is a fast me method, you can start applying this video right here and you watch the recorded sessions of you losing and just feel those fucking emotions. And this specific video walks you through 
reprogramming that price action, those patterns with the pattern of calmness, patience, contentment. And just you have repetition is key. Just like learning how to focus, repetition is key. How to get better at trading, repetition is key. How to be a better golfer, repetition is key. You have to keep doing this repetitive shit until it becomes unconscious, until you reprogram the subconscious. So that way, when you just have weird P&L swings or you missed a trade and it rips to the moon without you, even though you wanted to take that, that was part of the plan, and you just barely miss it, you're content, you're okay. Because there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, try to be better next time, but you review that footage and you associate, you see that price action ripping without you and you see that you missed it. And you have to feel the emotion of calmness. You have to be like, just seeing it rip without you, ripping without you, just being calm. I'm okay, I'm content. I'll wait for the next trade, even if that's an hour from now. So I touched on all three of these emotions. I'm okay, I'm calm, whatever. I'm content with the situation, it's fine, and I will wait. I'm not gonna try to force a trade or try to force, because sometimes when traders miss a setup, they attempt to try to recreate that opportunity they missed by placing another trade and overholding or placing another trade too soon or getting in when it's already too late to get in. So they're not patient. What happens? The table collapses. So just visualizing that price action and you have to feel the emotions. You have to see the price action and feel the emotion, okay? It's like placebos and fucking medical trials. Placebos fucking work. Placebos work. You know what else works? Is statistically people who are rather ill in the hospital, who are religious and have a have unwavering faith in God. And I'm not here to preach. This is a lesson, okay? I'm not here to say whatever. This is just a pure lesson. But those, you know, my mom, she in ner was a nurse, hospitals forever, nursing all of her life. People who have unwavering faith in God tend to pull out of their illnesses. Their cancer tends to go away or they end up Something happens where they just end up recovering or recouping. Not always, but more than not versus somebody who's negative and scared and pessimistic about the situation at hand. Just like placebos. Placebos work. Somebody can give you a sugar pill and say it does this. It gives you fucking boners. And then you're popping chups because you think it works and then it works. It's no different than visualizing this shit. That is essentially what you're doing because the thing is, your body doesn't know the difference between real stress and fake stress. What can happen is you can get stressed out over a situation that may never have happened. It may not happen, but you think it's going to happen. You think this situation is going to, oh my God, oh my God, this is going to happen. I'm going to get fired from my job or whatever, or something's going to happen. Uh, get in a car wreck today. Ah. If you dwell on that enough and think about it enough, you get scared, you feel fear. Those are real emotions. You're feeling real emotions. And then all of a sudden it never happened and you got stressed for no fucking reason. Well, the thing is you need to learn how to do the opposite of that. Most people don't because we're in a society, we live in a society that loves to dwell on negativity and pessimism. And this is what's keeping you guys a prisoner in your own fucking head. Heaven and hell, in my opinion, is up here. You could have everything in the world and be the most miserable fucking person. You could have absolutely nothing and be the happiest person. Okay? It is all in here. So when people have unwavering faith and a higher power in the hospital, what are they feeling? They're calm. Okay? They're content with the situation. They're patient. They know they're going to be okay. That is unwavering faith. And I'm talking about really feeling it in their core, feeling it. It's one thing to say you believe in a higher power, but then you start to question everything internally. You're, you're not sure. You're not calm. You don't have that true unwavering faith, right? And the thing is, stress makes you more sick. 
the more stressed you get, the more the, the blood is flowing away from the decision part of your brain, the cerebral cortex or whatever it's called. Blood is flowing away. You're going into fight or flight mode. You're hitting into the reptilian brain. So you're not able to focus. So you're kicking out the table legs and it's falling. Because when you're not calm, you're going into fight or flight mode. Blood is coming out of this part of your brain. So the focus is going to dump because now your brain is not getting what it fucking needs. It's not getting the blood flow it needs to focus. You're not, no patience. You, when you're FOMOing, that is fear of missing out. Fear, fight or flight, blood flowing away from the brain, from the front part of the brain. You're gonna lose focus. The table is going to fall, okay? So the thing is, you have to be aware of these emotions. If you're not aware, then you can't grab the table legs when they start to shake and prop it up, okay? This is why meditation is so important. This is why meditation is so important. So a lot of people are like, oh, I can't meditate because you're supposed to focus on your breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. So maybe you can focus on it for a few seconds, okay? The thing is, the brain starts to go, well, I think I wanna eat this or that for dinner. Breathe in, breathe out. Uh, I wonder what I'm gonna have for dinner. You know, oh, I need to go do this. I need to go to the grocery store. That's what I need to do. Oh shit, I'm not meditating anymore. Let's focus on the breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Focusing, breathe in, breathe out. Focusing, breathe in, breathe out. I wonder what I want to do this weekend. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Nah, I think I'm going to go, uh, I don't know. See what my friends are doing. I'm, I'm going to call a friend after this. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, shit. I need to focus on my breathing. Breathe in, breathe out. Not thinking, breathe in, breathe out. Bring it, breathe in, breathe out. Okay. So what's happening is you're focusing on breath, right? You're focusing on breath, just breathing, no thoughts. And then you start to lose focus and start to think random shit. And then you become aware that you are no longer focused. And now that you're aware you are no longer focused, you refocus. You're focusing on just the breath. You're not thinking, you're not thinking. You're focused on breathing, not thinking. All of a sudden the mind wanders. You're thinking about what you're gonna do for the for the fucking weekend. It's like these table legs are starting to collapse. Uh-oh, the table legs are starting to collapse. Oh shit, I'm I'm not fucking thinking about I'm not meditating. I'm aware that I'm no longer meditating. Start meditating, focused again, focused. Thinking about the grocery store, the table starts to wobble. Right? The table's starting to wobble. Oh, I'm aware that I am no longer focused. Come back. So meditation, the wandering mind is good in meditation. Oh, I can't meditate. Good. Because the purpose of it is to not just shut your fucking mind up. It is a focus exercise and awareness exercise. It is like going to the gym and lifting weights for your brain. Awareness and focus. Focus and awareness. Very important. The more you become aware, the more you do it, first and foremost, the more you become aware that your mind is wandering, the faster you can come back to focus, the longer you can stay in focus. Does that make sense? The more you do it, the faster you become aware the mind is wandering, the sooner you come back to focus, the more you focus on the breath, the better you get at focusing on breath, the longer you can focus on breath. Do you see how this will help? So you need awareness because at this point, as I've said in this video right here, I put fucking catnip in that, by the way. That's Chimera, the one cat I don't usually ever talk about. Anyways, in this video right here, I talk about how specific patterns are, are subconsciously programmed. Well, now you need to be aware. Now you need to start to become aware. You're essentially going through a meditation process in order to fix your trading emotions, okay? You have to be aware 
that you are not content. You have to be aware that you are losing patience. You have to be aware that you are not calm, okay? Here is the table. You have to be aware when those fucking legs are starting to shake because chances are they're going to start to shake. Some of you, they just collapse instantaneously. Some of you are able to hang into a trading session a lot longer than others before they lose their patience, calmness, and contentment. But you may not be at the level where you can just handle market abuse. You have to be able to sit there the entire session and handle market abuse. This literally can be the difference for a lot of you guys. This right here is what's probably keeping a lot of you from actually hitting consistency is the mental part of the fucking game. Some people are like, oh, just strategy. I'll fuck off. When I've talked to so many traders for this week, all fucking mental problems. One of them is just using stop losses and having the broker cut them off to handle his trading psychology problems. But what he's not fucking doing is this. And if you're trying to use mechanical shit like the broker cutting you off or just stop losses or whatever, you're still likely to put on shitty trades that are going to hit fucking stop loss because you're not patient or calm or content. Yeah, sure, you have stop losses and a daily drawdown in place, but now you're hitting shitty trades. You can still fucking chase a trade even though the stop may get hit. So you still have to be focused enough to put on good fucking trades. Even if you have some mechanical fucking thing to pull you out. And at that point, you're relying purely on technology. But you've, you're still fucked up because you haven't retrained your brain how to fucking associate price action with ideal fucking emotion. You literally have to just be okay with what's going on because you're not in fucking control. In my, in my forecasting trades video, hell, I talk about, I mean, this is a good video. It's the last one. I talk about how you could probably forget forecasts, you know, two, three, four, five, six scenarios at best. But the thing is the combinations of price action are in the hundreds of millions. And one of your five fucking forecasted scenarios is like hitting the lottery. You're not in control and you can't really predict what's going on. This is why I fucking scalp. I mean, this is, and you can see what I'm doing in the coffee and shit. And I take really small scalps. That makes a lot of the PL. But again, this right here, if you're, if you're not fixing any of the problems, you're going to take shitty trades. Even if you have mechanical shit to pull you out. Um, and as you get better, the table doesn't just collapse. It starts to wobble. That's how it was for me. It's like, fuck, I'm, not okay with taking break evens all the time. So therefore I'm not content. And if I'm not content, the content leg starts to wobble. I'm starting to lose my patience and I'm starting to get a little tilted. Now the whole table's fucking jerking. The turkey's flopping all over the fucking place. My focus is going everywhere. Oh, I'm tired of these break evens. I hate this fucking environment. Ah, da, da. You know, oh, the table's starting to collapse, focus is going, and then you start taking shitty trades, you're missing price action, you need to pay attention to. Like, you need to be focused on the market, like, in it. And in order to be focused on the market, that takes a lot of conscious power, okay? Because the market's always different every fucking day. That takes a lot of focus. You have to be completely engaged, like any fucking sport. So you need to be aware. And if you have problems with being aware, meditation is the foundation to being able to take that and put it into this. That's why that is so important. It is to become aware faster and to stay focused longer. And if you're becoming more aware about how you're thinking and your thoughts are, then you're going to be aware when you're not calm, not content, or patient. But when you're not calm, content, or fucking patient... The problem is you're fucking associating specific P&L swings and price action to specific emotions and they're probably negative emotions. I guarantee 99.9% .9 of you like a Clorox wipe are having these exact problems because I've talked to thousands of fucking traders and it's the same fucking song and dance. So chances are that's going on. And the only way to fix the fucking problem is to visualize the situation that were originally created a long time ago that you weren't aware of. You created patterns and associated them with 
negative emotions, not the ideal emotion. And once you become aware that you have negative emotions, now you have to start to program them, this video, with the ideal emotions, patience, contentment, calmness. And you can do that through this technique or through the hypnosis technique, which I also talk about in this video as well. And if you're not reviewing your trades, this is a quick way to do it because the more you can visually see the trades, the more you can see the emotions that upset you, the more you become aware and the more you can actually get into a place where you can visualize, see those scenarios and start to reprogram through repetition, specific price action patterns with contentment, calmness and patience because FOMO is not one size fits all. I talk about it in this video. FOMO is not one size fits all. And again, it takes in order for you guys to really understand what the fuck is going on in, the, in this uh, trading course is sucked video. I talk about how you need to watch something 10 to 15 times to absorb it because you're only retaining 10 to 15% of the information. So when I fucking share videos like this video, this video, this video, this video, this video, especially this video, this video, and this video, you need to watch those 10 to 15 times for it to actually sink the fuck in. Repetition. Because you're only retaining a fraction of the fucking information coming out of my fucking mouth. That's why I got to repeat a lot of fucking shit. So once you're able to start to visualize and repro, it takes repetition. It takes repetition. Okay. So again, you have the ability to do it through this method, which is a very valid method. I recommend this. And you also have the ability to do it through um, self-hypnosis right here and actually on my coffee i do have a hypnosis track i made for the coffee subs on being a scalper and i recommend anybody doing my coffee you need to listen to this fucker for 30 fucking days every night and you need to when you listen to it lay on the floor put on headphones and fucking focus because it's essentially a meditation it's a meditation where you're like, uh, your brain wanders, but then you refocus on the hypnosis, then your brain wanders, and then you refocus on the hypnosis. But the hypnosis is also designed to get you into um, a relaxed state. So you're more likely, when you go into a relaxed state, you go into different brainwave states. So you're now more in touch to the subconscious mind, and that's when you can really reprogram it. So the moment you're waking up or the moment you're about to fall asleep, you're kind of on this cuspus where you're going from one brainwave state to another. And in that purgatory, that's when you can really reprogram and supercharge the subconscious mind. Now, visualizing is just fine by reviewing trades, but why not take it to the next level? Because honestly, who wants to take longer than they need to to get good at this fucking job. Why do you want to spend longer than what you need to to get good at this job? I have no fucking idea, but it fucking happens. So now that you're fucking aware and you're starting to visualize specific shit, because FOMO is not one size fits all. For instance, maybe the market ripped up. That can trigger FOMO. You work on that. You visualize the market ripping up. Without you, you're content, you're calm, you're patient. And you keep visualizing this. You Maybe you make a hypnosis track and you're okay with it. Well, all of a sudden the market rips down. You didn't do any visualization. And then you have FOMO. See, the thing is, you could reprogram the ideal emotions with an up move that you missed, but maybe you didn't reprogram the unconscious mind with a down move. So when you see down moves, since you've never visualized that, and chances are, like in this video, you've programmed negative emotions or you've programmed FOMO over hundreds or thousands of trades over years and years to up moves and down moves, chances are you reprogrammed an up move, I'm calm, I'm fine. But if you didn't program a down move, you're still gonna experience FOMO. See, the thing is like, I experience sessions where I'll be above and below break even. I don't know. 
two, three times, no problem, and then I can win or whatever. But there was one day where I was, my PL was swinging hard. It was up two grand, down two grand, up two grand, down two grand. And it happened, I swung above and below break even four times. Not two, not three, but four. Guess what happened? I started to get fucking pissed. I got pissed. I was losing my patience. I had to step the fuck away because I have not visualized or programmed my subconscious mind with that specific pattern. I've not programmed my subconscious mind with the pattern of having the PL swing above and below thousand dollars. You know, it's one thing if it's 500 or some shit, but 2000, four fucking times. That very nuanced specific scenario, I have not program contentment calmness or patience with that so i can be a content calm patient trader but the moment some wacky fucking scenario like that gets thrown at me then the table legs start to fucking wobble because i've not been through that exercise up here it's no different than an athlete playing a game a hockey game you could be a great hockey player but all of a sudden you play a team who kind of does because a lot of like sports, there's patterns and it's unconscious at some point. Maybe the, there's like patterns going on between the players you never saw and then you lose. And then you start to lose it emotionally. Or there's athletes who end up going to an Olympic game or some shit. There's a great book called Bounce by Matthew Sid. He goes, you know, great table tennis player. He goes to the Olympics and he fucking chokes. He did never visualize that specific scenario with the ideal emotions. He didn't visualize the crowds. He didn't visualize players from all around the world, this big event, all these eyes on him, it being televised like that, you know, batting for his country. He didn't visualize none of that, that that specific scenario he hadn't been through. So he's not calm with the situation. And then he lost focus. Okay, so you're going to have to do this a lot because until you've experienced damn near every scenario and reprogrammed almost every scenario with the ideal emotion multiple times, something's going to come and bite you in the ass. And this is a sustained practice that will take you years because as I've said in this specific video, you probably programmed negative emotions for years now you're gonna have to fucking undo it but the thing is if you can fucking do some self-hypnosis shit on top of that you can expedite and supercharge that process and get through it a lot quicker because when you're in a relaxed state you're get you're talking to the subconscious mind a lot sooner so this is one of the better ways to do it but the other method is just as fucking powerful and is almost just as necessary now there is one thing that could potentially happen there is one thing we do need to talk about that we've not covered and that's fatigue fatigue is like throwing a fucking tablecloth on top of everything the moment you hit fatigue there is no amount of focus anything to get out of that there is no performing at your highest and best performance or your you're not going to be trading at your best when there is fatigue. And this, I don't like pushing it more than two hours because I will start to get fatigued. If you guys are sitting here for four, three, four, five fucking hours, you're not, you, fatigue's kicking in. You're not going to perform at your best. There, there's this misconception where traders think that if they get consistent and if they're able to trade the entire fucking day, they're just going to make more money. Now, you're fighting fatigue. It's like fucking theta decay in options. You're fighting that when you trade options. You're fighting fatigue decay, essentially, uh, as shit's going on. And it throws a fucking tablecloth on everything. You're not able to fucking focus. You're just going to start s taking stupid trades. The more fatigued you get, the more you are drunk trading, essentially. It doesn't matter if you're calm, you're focused, or patient, or whatever. You're tired, so you're going to make stupid fucking decisions. So at this point, you need to be aware you're tired and then go take a fucking nap. And there is absolutely no out trading this. 
like if I don't feel alert, I will drill. If I don't feel well, I will not trade the open. I, I stay up late a lot, so I miss the open a lot. I want to be awake and alert because you are fighting fatigue. And at some point, like, so when you're reviewing your trades or whatever, was fatigue an issue? Could just being aware of it and stepping the fuck out and going to sleep for an hour, will that be enough to fix it? And then you can come back. So there's just no out trading fatigue. It's throwing a tablecloth on everything. You might start to not be patient or whatever, and you might just, all those emotions could just go. It's, it's like the fucking... It's like it's just non-existent, a tablecloth. It's smothering everything. It's smothering everything. You can't clearly see the table. You can't see the legs with calmness, contentment, patience. You can't see the focus. You can't see the turkey. It's smothered fatigue. It's a haze. So there is no fucking out trading that shit. And uh, that is the one thing you can't deal with. That is something you need to be very aware of and you need to deal with it. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.